In Excel, how can we dynamically combine multiple tables from a workbook? Well, in this video, we're looking at two options. First of all, Power Query, and then secondly, the VStack function. So if you're ready, let's fire up Excel and let's go. Here we have a workbook which contains three worksheets, each with a table. We have January, February, and March. I want to combine all three tables together into a single data sheet. Not only that, but when we add a new table for future months, we want that sheet to update automatically. The first option we're exploring is Power Query. I will start by selecting a cell in the January table, then clicking Data from Table slash Range. Power Query loads, but only shows the January table. I'll start by renaming the query to data, and then I will delete the changed type step. Now let's focus on the source step. It has equals excel.currentworkbook as the function. Then after that, it filters the name column to January and drills into the content column. Well, if we remove everything after excel.currentworkbook, we now get a list of all the tables and named ranges in the workbook. If we've used naming conventions, then it's easy to get the tables that we want. Here, I want to filter to include everything that starts with TBL, and that's short for table. Now we're going to load our query back into Excel as a table. We want to avoid loading that table back into its own query. So therefore, we are going to filter out TBL data because that is what we're going to call our output table. Okay, I'll click OK. And now we're ready to click the expand icon. We don't want to use the original column name as prefix and then we can click OK. Right, we can now delete the name column and finally let's apply the data types. So date should be a date data type. I'll select item, hold shift and select region and then I can change both of those to a text data type, and then value should be a decimal number. Okay, we're finished in Power Query. Now let's close and load this back to Excel. So I'll click on the Close and Load dropdown, and then go to Close and Load 2. And we want to load this as a table on an existing worksheet, and we want cell B4. And then I'll click OK. Right, let's go and rename our table to TBL data, as we know that that's the table name that will be excluded. You can see here that we have all of the data combined for January, February, and March. Now let's go and get our April data and pull that into our workbook. And then we just need to click data, refresh all. Fantastic, and now everything updates. And now we have the data for April included in our table as well. So we have combined multiple tables in a workbook using Power Query. There is another way that we could achieve this using the VStack function. Notice that we have a start sheet, which is empty, and an end sheet, which is also empty. And these are both sides of the sheets that we want to combine. On the VStack sheet, let's start by getting the header row from the January sheet. But before we commit that, I just want you to take a note of where our data starts. So it starts in cell B5 and goes across to column E. Right, now let's commit to that header row. Next, we want to enter a VStack function. So we'll type equals VStack, open bracket. We'll then select the start sheet, hold shift and click the end sheet. So we're going to create a three-dimensional reference that works across sheets. Now we need to make an assumption about the maximum number of rows that can be found in a table. In this scenario, let's assume it's 100. So we want to select the cells all the way from B5, which is our start cell. We want to go down 100 rows, but also across to column E. So B5 to E104. We can now close that bracket and commit that and it combines all of those ranges together, but it includes a lot of zeros for all those empty cells. So now let's use the let and filter function to exclude any empty rows. So at the start, we'll enter let, open bracket, and we will create a variable called data. 
So now the result of our VStack function is referred to as data. At the end, we'll enter a comma, and then the result that we want to return uses the filter function on our data, which was our VStack function. And we want to filter where, column one, so we will use choose calls on the data and column one, where that does not equal zero. We'll close those brackets and commit that. And as you can see, we now have just the cells that contain data for our January, February, and March sheets. Now, dynamic arrays do not copy formatting across, so let's go and apply a date format to column B. So I'll select column B, and I'll press Control-1 to get to the format cells, and now let's apply a custom number format of day, then month, and then year. And as we scroll down, you can see that we have data up to the end of March. Right, now let's go and see what happens when we add the April data sheet between the start and the end sheets. So let's grab that and drag that in. And when we go back to our VStack sheet, there it is. There is our April data. So we've now combined our data dynamically based on that start sheet and end sheet. Now, this is the crucial part. I've shown you two methods for dynamically combining tables in a workbook, but these methods are not interchangeable. They serve very different use cases. So if you're in the phase of reshaping inputs into data, then you should use the Power Query option. If you're in the phase of calculating on the data, then you should use the VStack option. If you choose the wrong method, it can cause you more problems later on. So make sure you select the right method for the phase that you're in. Now, if you're not sure what phase you're in or why it makes any difference, then I recommend you join our Excel Academy training program. We don't just teach the tools, but also how to apply those tools in the right way so that you can use Excel in an optimal way. If you'd like to hear more from us, then why not subscribe and sign up for notifications and then you won't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.